Welcome back to the last of the laptop reviews from me for now for the new series of laptops from Xiaomi. So we've got the Redmi Book series. I've already reviewed the 14 inch model and now this is the 15.6 inch model, the Redmi Book Pro 15. Now this is very similar to the Mi Notebook Pro that I've just also reviewed too. No OLED screen in this one, but a more practical anti-glare matte screen. It's IPS, but 90 Hertz. This model has more practical full-size USB ports, so type A ports on this, a full-size HDMI, it has the Thunderbolt 4. Now the spec of this one that I got from a store on AliExpress called Redmi Select Store, very good because they came pre-installed with English on it. So I didn't have to put the Chinese or get the Chinese language off and then install the language pack. They did all that work for me, which was good. So this one has the Core i7, the 11370H, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and it has the MX450 from NVIDIA, which is a 25 watt version and a 512 gigabyte NVMe drive. For a 15.6 inch laptop, it's not bad the weight of it. I'm so used to gaming laptops at 1.75 kilos. It's not the lightest out there, but I still think it's quite good when you factor into the total travel weight. So here with the cable and our 100 watt charger, that brings it up to 1.98 kilos. So under two kilos, that's not bad at all. So the lid has Redmi printed on here, power your creativity. And this lid can be opened up just with one hand, no problems. And pressing down on the top of it, there's really no flex. The build quality is excellent on this machine, just like the Mi Notebook Pro. And opening it up here, very, very similar keyboard. Of course, both of them are 15.6 inch laptops. Nice large touchpad, finer movements, very accurate and no real issues. I do like this touchpad, it's got a smooth feeling to it. So it's all alloy around the outside and it is very easy to scratch. I've noticed this on the previous generations and it hasn't really changed this paint job. Easy to mark, so be careful about that. Now very nice keyboard to type on and again, there's like no flex with this pressing down, it's really soldered. And if I give this a tap, the touchpad doesn't seem to be vibrating or making any noise. Now, good spacing of the keys, 1.5 millimeters of travel, backlit keyboard here as well with the two different stages. We have the AI key right here. Now, once you uninstall the software, pressing this doesn't do anything and pressing it down, it has more resistance compared to the other keys. A fingerprint reader slash power button, this does work really well, no problems with it. And it is a really nice keyboard. I'm so happy with this, this one. I've typed a lot on these keyboards before and why change something from the previous models if it's a good keyboard, just keep with the same design, which is exactly what they've done here, Xiaomi. Another reason why I like this model over the Mi Notebook Pro is it does have the full size USB ports, not just type C. Unfortunately, the Mi Notebook Pro only has type C's. 3.5 millimeter, good audio quality out of this. This is USB 2.0, so I will just be using my mouse on that anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And then on the left side, that's where we get some really decent ports here. So full size HDMI 2.A, we have USB 3.2 Gen 1 and Thunderbolt 4. So we can run two monitors out 4K 60 tested with this. And this is our type C in, and that is for charging. The so status LED, this is flashing when charging, fully on and green once fully charged. And it does charge really quick. So 35 minutes, you get about 50% battery. And then it takes just around about an hour and a half to fully charge the 70 watt hour battery in this model. The Remy Book Pro 15 underside just like the Mi Notebook Pro. We've got the T5 Torx screws holding this rear plate on. Intake vent is all of this right here. The two downwards frying two watt DTS tuned speakers. At first it is a little tricky to get this rear lid off but do start from about here and this corner I found was the easiest. Work my way along and then the whole rear that just pops off. So we do have a heatsink this time over our SSD and the BIOS battery is not underneath the hot SSD like we have with the Redmi Book Pro 14 model. And this really has the same kind of layout to it. It's just a single large fan, the two copper transfer pipes. Is it enough to cool down the NVIDIA MX450 and then that Core i7? Well, I don't really think it is. And you'll see later on with the thermals that uh, yeah, it peaks at very hot temperatures and there will be some thermal throttling taking place. So good to see a larger battery than even the Mi Notebook Pro. This one is 70 watt hours. The Mi Notebook Pro, the new model only has a 66 watt hour battery. So what can we change in here? Upgrades, just the wireless cards. So that's that AX201 from Intel. And the RAM is underneath this shielding. We cannot upgrade the RAM. It's only the single SSD 
and you can swap out that one, upgrade it to up to four terabytes or even eight terabytes now you can get with NVMe drives. Unlike the Mi Notebook Pro, this is an IPS screen here. It does have the DC dimming, and the advantage of this one is that it's 90 hertz. It's a lot smoother, a lot better, I find, than in ways more practical than the Mi Notebook Pro screen because of the anti-glare coating. So we've got a very high resolution, 3200 by 2000, so things do look really sharp on screen. And the brightness with the DC dimming, I notice that you only see maybe a little bit of flicker when just lowering down the brightness, which I do right now. So that's the lowest setting, which is nice and dim. That's only about 10 nits. And then up to the maximum brightness, which is gonna to be too much for my camera settings at the moment, that is approximately 270 nits, is the maximum I'm measuring here. So a little on the low side, but because it's an anti-glare screen, that really is its saving grace. And the color coverage, the gamut is nowhere near as good as the Mi Notebook Pros. That one has a fantastic screen. So let's just bring up my Spider Pro measurements. So this has a 95% sRGB, NTSC is 68%, Adobe RGB is 74% and P3 73%. So nowhere near as good. If you're gonna be editing and you do color grading and work like that, that's a reason to go for the Mi Notebook Pro's OLED screen. But I think for most people, this screen is just more practical, more usable, anti-glare. I do enjoy it more, a little bit better on my eyes too with less reflections. And here you can see with the screen that with a black image, there is very little backlight bleed from this IPS panel. Just a little bit around here, but it's barely noticeable. I mean, I don't look at solid black images, so it's a non-issue to me. And the bias on this model, just like the others I have reviewed, it is completely locked down to us. There are just a few little tiny changes like enable external keyboard mouse wake up. You can set the backlight to be on all the time or to have it to time out and then I'll boot order and disabling secure boot. That's it with these laptops. And here's what the speakers sound like. So as I pointed out before, they are downwards firing left and right, and they tend to just reflect off hard surfaces. They don't sound too bad, but this is them at 100% volume. Bezels left and right aren't too bad. They're reasonably slim. The top bezel is okay. And it does, of course, house a webcam here. So this one's an HD webcam. The quality is okay. I've seen definitely worse. I've seen better. There's a little bit of grain to it. But what I do like are the dual array microphones either side of this one. So the two mics there pick up sound well. Now, if I was to type on the keyboard, you can hear a little bit of noise coming through. But once you're talking, uh, it's doing a good job. Again, those mics. So when I first powered on the laptop, I just went straight into the desktop. Now this seller where I got this unit from, they're called Shenzhen Woodphone. They have installed English already for me. They've put a valid Windows 10 Pro license on it and just added the language pack. So I don't need to go through all that process, which is easy. They've included a couple of PDF files here, one of which is how to install Office, so an activation guide. It's already there on the system. Once you activate it, then you can swap over the language too to English, and that's very handy to have some added value there with this particular system. So I've taken a quick benchmark here of the drive, which is that 512 gigabyte NVMe drive. The speeds are okay, but it's certainly no Samsung NVMe drive. It's a little slower there. Those ones can get up to like 3,000 reads, 3,000 writes, and so we are missing out on a bit of speed there, but still a lot faster than, say, the three there, of course, with this one. Under the device manager, just a couple of things to point out. So the CPU is listed eight times, of course, because it's multi-threaded. So there's two threads per core, a quad core. And I'll get onto just a couple of benchmarks of that just shortly too. So this one, 11th gen, finally, and it does have the Irix XE graphics. So this is the same spec as the Mi Notebook Pro, but the screen is different. They're really almost identical laptops, these ones right here. The network adapter, this one is the Intel AX201. Now this is a very quick adapter. I can get 1.3 to 1.2 gigabit transfers. So that's even faster than gigabit LAN if it did have it, which this uh, laptop sadly does not. Now the RAM, that's 16 gigabytes. It is running at 3.2 gigahertz dual channel. And no problems with that. And here you can see that they have partitioned the drive. So they've got one here set up for Windows, another for data there. Now, of course, you can change that and just set it to one partition 
if you wanted to do so there. So just Geekbench, a couple of benchmarks that I did run, and I'll get onto a few more just after this. So the OpenCL score of the Iris XE graphics, you can see there it's 12,000, almost 13,000. And look at the difference here compared to the MX450. So NVIDIA's MX450 dedicated graphics, but only two gigabytes of dedicated RAM for it, which is a shame, but still gets a much better score. You can see it's well over twice the speed of the integrated graphics. That's why they include it. And here is Geekbench 5 CPU score. So single core score here, that is impressive. That is really good. And for quad core, the multi-core score here, also very good. So these 11th gen chips, they are a big step up. I know a lot of people are waiting for the AMD model of this, and I don't know when that's out. It should be out in a couple of months, but I think it's just down to stock levels from AMD. Why we haven't seen that model yet in public. I run the latest NVIDIA driver update. So I'm now on 466.27. It was a very dated driver that it was on this, and I do recommend you update all those drivers. I always do this for my reviews anyway. So the performance of the system, very, very quick. Nothing is laggy or slow. YouTube playback doesn't drop any frames, even at 4K60. So I won't show you those general kind of tasks because it's pointless because it's all really quick with this quad core. And here we have 4K60 playback, a demanding clip here, HEVC file, and really no issues. It's very, very smooth there. And even this jellyfish, okay, this one's 10-bit HEVC, 140 megabits per second. A couple of little stutters at the start, but that normally happens on every single system. I mean, even my AMD Ryzen 9 does that just for a couple of seconds. And there we go. Very smooth. So that playback, excellent. So anything you throw at it really video playback wise, it will just chew it up and not a problem at all, especially with that dedicated graphics. And how does it perform with the dedicated graphics? So here we have Wildlife Extreme Score. It's kind of low for, well, it is just an MX450. It's not a gaming GPU at all. It's just low end. So that scores, I mean, it's okay, I guess, for it. Fire Strike, same score, really. There's nothing in it here as the Mi Notebook Pro. Same internals, okay, that version I reviewed with the Core i7. Same, really, exactly the same there. And PC Mark, another similar score here too. So you can take a look at those scores. Overall, very good. Uh, the physics score is the one that stands out here too. So that processor, that CPU, that's actually quite good. It's just that graphic score is, is very low there. Cinebench R20 score. So this is only eight points off what I got with the Mi Notebook Pro. That got 3,330. So really, they are the same, same internals. And they both peak at the same temperatures too, or very similar. I mean, look at this. This is not good to see at all. Take a look at our thermals. We are reaching on a CPU package, you can see right here, 100 degrees Celsius, okay? It will peak at that. The fans then kick right up. It takes a little while, a couple of seconds to get right up to the high RPMs. Fan noise is actually pretty good on this. It's not that loud. It's not like my gaming notebook. It's nothing like that at all, but still not good to see. It's the two transfer pipes and the single fan is just not enough. And even the two fans is not enough either to keep these internals cool. So really, Xiaomi needs to do a redesign, I think, on the refresh of this model later on the end of the year. If they do refresh it, they need to change the cooling on it. Now with 4K video editing, the timeline is very good. And I have noticed that even at a half playback resolution, that it seems to be running 30 frames per second. My timeline clips are made up of some 4K 100 megabit per second clips here from my Sony A6400. And just a basic edit here seems to be pretty good. No noticeable lag or slowdown coming through. Now I have been disappointed with the export times running off the MX450. If you export on the integrated Iris XE, it's a lot quicker. So it is the MX450 that's slowing down these times. So what I will use is my standard what I do with my test here, YouTube 4K preset, and I get one minute of footage, and I'll export that now, and we'll see how long it's gonna take. And here we go, so start on the timer and export. So the Mi Notebook Pro, it took two minutes and 22 seconds, two minutes and 20, really. Let's see how long this one takes. Hopefully it's gonna be quicker than that. Just about to finish up now, so it's looking like a similar kind of score. Once that bar goes away, I will stop it. Taking a bit longer, there we go. So that was just a few seconds slower than the Mi Notebook Pro, but really the same, it's identical hardware. 
And you can see most of the work was done by the CPU. The GPU was helping out a little bit, but it didn't seem to want to use the quick sync for some reason with this notebook, but it does with other models. So I don't know why that is happening. On to a look at our gaming performance. So this is 1080p on the low settings here with the Witcher 3. And I can feel already the middle of the keyboard's getting quite warm, but just above the keyboard when gaming, I'll break out my thermal probe soon, thermal imaging camera, and take a look at that because it is really, really hot. Just touching that, it feels like it could actually almost burn me. It's that bad. And it's exactly the same as the Mi Notebook Pro and the Redmi Pro 14. So nothing has changed there. Performance wise, this at 1080p is so much better than the Iris Xe graphics, which would be about 30 frames per second. So we're getting an additional, not quite double, but sometimes you can see now in this area, yes, it is about double the performance, um, but not always though. But good to see on a few little starters now because it's thermal throttling. It's dropped the thermals right down, the power use and the CPU has gone right down to 1200, 1600 megahertz. And before I did see it up around three gigahertz. Um, so dropping it down that far is not good to see because it'll get up to about 90 degrees, the CPU hit about 98, 99 throttle. You can see it's starting to go up now. We're back up to three gigahertz. And it's just going to happen again. And it's a cycle that it keeps doing. It gets really hot, throttles, performance does a few little stutters, drops back down. So this is not really ideal for gamers. But yes, of course, you can do a little bit of gaming here on the side. Counter-Strike performance, and I didn't want the bomb, but someone dropped it. So this is 1080p, lower settings, and it's normally always well over 150 frames per second. Well, not always. It's dipping down a little bit here. Remember, we've got a 90 hertz screen with this one, so you can get well over that 90 hertz. And I am dead here. Oh no, I managed to kill him. That was an absolute fluke. I only got eight health as well left. So I'm basically dead here. So I'll take another risk and just run out. So this performance is good. I mean, it's very, very smooth and fast. So now looking at about 200 frames per second, and there is a sniper about there, and he got me. All right, so that is the end of me. I don't last too long in this anyway. And taking a look at just how hot it's getting. So the touchpad, the palm rest is fine, but look at this area in the middle of the keyboard. That gets up to 52. I've seen it actually around 53 degrees. There we go. 54, 55 even. That is just way too hot for me. Now this is after just gaming for 30 minutes. So the longer you game, the warmer and the hotter it's going to get in the middle of the keyboard and just above it. And our fan noise, so this is what it sounds like, the fans at 100%. It's not that offensive, you can hear it clearly, but it's nothing like a gaming laptop. Very quickly to touch on Linux support. Sadly, this is as far as I've been able to get with the latest Linux Mint builds that I've disabled secure boot. And it looks like it's going to start. There are a lot of errors and I get to this little splash load screen and that's as far as it will go. It just completely locks up. So sadly, it has the same issues that I've seen on all three models now of these new revised ones that I have reviewed in the channel. So having the 11th gen chips is a big step up in performance with the single core scores especially, and even the multi cores, quite a nice bump up. We get the Thunderbolt 4 support. Now there is apparently going to be AMD models of this, but we don't know when they're gonna have the Ryzen 5000 series. They did say May, we're in May now, so I think maybe next month and just fingers crossed they will be coming. Now I'm not too sure if I will be reviewing them. I know there's a lot of AMD fans in the channel asking for them, but it really depends on the interest of these notebooks has been pretty low so far. So the thermals on this one, 99 degrees Celsius, just the same problem as the Mi Notebook Pro. And then it hits uh, thermal throttling, the performance drops. And when you game on it, just above the keyboard right here it does get very hot. And for me, that's the big con of this machine. The rest I really do like. I mean, this build quality is really good. It is very, very solid. The touchpad's excellent. The keyboard is still one of my favorites. I actually really do like typing on this one. I don't get a lot of typos. The webcam quality is average, a bit grainy, but the microphones are very good. The hinge and just the solidness of this is a definite step up from the previous gen models from Xiaomi. Now the performance overall is really quick and snappy. It's great, but what about that battery life? 90 hertz plus that very high 3200 by 2000 resolution has a huge impact on the battery life. So that's why Xiaomi put a slightly larger battery in this one to try and compensate compared to the Mi Notebook Pro, but still only around five to four and a half hours 
of general kind of use. That's Chrome, the brightness set to 30%, which is still quite dim, not really that bright. And if you lower the resolution, sorry, the refresh rate, and even the resolution. If you lower the resolution and the refresh rate, then you can really improve on your battery life. But what I did test out is lowering it. This is an option to push function and then S for screen and it chops down the refresh rate on the fly just like that to 60 hertz then and the battery life is then around six and a half hours to seven with just light kind of general use. So it's not really a battery champion, unfortunately. Now, if they'd gone with a 99 watt hour battery, which is the legal limit, I believe then that it could probably do about eight to nine hours which is a shame they didn't do this. So there is no SD card slot on this. We cannot put another NVMe drive in it. And that's probably to do with the PCIe lanes that of course Thunderbolt 4 is going to need. So that's a reason why it's probably not there. Apart from that, I do like it better than the Mi Notebook. I think this one is just more practical. The anti-glare screen is having way more ports, the full size HDMI. You're not living that horrible dongle life like Apple users have to do. So it's just Type-C ports on the Mi Notebook Pro and you have to use adapters and dongles for everything. But this, you don't need to do it at all. So very fast charging too as well. It is a good notebook. It's just Xiaomi, please, if you watch these videos, fix the thermals. You need to redesign the cooling on this, larger fans, more copper in there. And I believe then you'll have yourself a winner, of course, if priced right. So thank you so much for watching my review here of the Redmi Book, the Pro 15 model.